Hello everybody, so the game has been out for two days and I have done a couple of starting playthroughs. Um, my first one, I ended up being in a vicious cycle where I had no troops, kept losing, waged war, pissed off every, everybody. So this time around, um, it's gone a lot better. Um, I'm about 10 hours in uh, to this new campaign and I thought I'd make a little like starting tip guide um, based on what I've learnt so far. Um, this is more orientated towards um, players that haven't played a Mountain Blade game before. Most most Mountain Blade players from Warband or, or any of the other ones. Um, I didn't play the other ones. Um, they, well, I mean, the gist is fairly the same. So this is for for people that are new new to the uh, new to the series. Um, so picking a faction. Uh, when you watch, uh, this is not about creating a character. Um, that's completely up to you. I don't think it's too terribly important um, how you go. I mean, fights still go the same, um, just depending on how you play. This is more like what to do on the campaign, um, the main map, so you know what you're doing. So the game starts you off, I think, here on the tutorial, and you're in the Southern Empire. So the Southern Empire here, the Western Empire, the Northern Empire. Um, I don't know what these are called. I call them the Saranids from Warband, uh, the Batanians and the Vlandians, the precursors to the Swadians from Warband. Um, so yeah, anyway, the game starts you here. Now, what I would recommend doing is picking a faction that you like the most. Um, I don't think it's too terribly important stat-wise what you pick. Um, I think the units are reasonably balanced, so it's just what you prefer, what you like, you know, whether you want some Berserkers from Batania. Um, some Saranids, you know, like cavalry and stuff, um, the Kuze and stuff like that. Um, it's completely up to you. So, yeah, pick a faction. And what I would recommend doing is going to these three villages, picking up some people so you don't die to looters on the map. Um, because obviously if you're a single companion, you're going to be attacked by everybody. It's kind of annoying. So pick up some people for protection. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to go straight on over to your selective faction um for me i picked the flandians and the reason why i picked the flandians is because i like swadians from warband and they are the precursors that's why the only reason i picked them um i remember in war in warband that the the nordics were really good infantry and these were really good like all round battalions but i don't know what the battalions are um maybe they're like the rodox i don't know uh the rodox were like quite keen crossbowmen um so yeah, I picked the Vlandians and I went over straight on over to them and I started building up reputation. So once you've picked your selected faction that you want to be part of, um, the main thing to build up is to go to clan and you want to build up reputation. Now, reputation is quite important um, just purely because it's a sort of like your level. It's not really. Um, you actually have a main level, but it's sort of like an unlockable achievement to things in the game. So once you hit level one, you could, you can become a mercenary with your party to a faction. You can start waging wars on their their enemies. Uh, once you hit number two, you can become a vassal. Um, you can become an actual nobleman from, from for that clan. And then once you hit number three, you're eligible to create your own kingdom, which means you can become your own faction, um, which is obviously where all the fun is in 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 warband. So this this is the same thing here. So building up reputation. How do you do that? So you want to be fighting f battles. Um, that you can, that are, are fairly even to gain renown. Um, so it's not reputation, sorry, it's renown. Um, but same thing, reputation, renown. Um, you want to be fighting fights. So, for instance, if I was to fight these 11 looters with my 65 units here, I will gain very little renown for this because it's just me killing 11 looters. It's not exciting. What you want is you want a fight that is equal, that is like kind of famous it's more like whoa you know i, I took on a i took on a, a an army against like 70 you know because i'm outmatched so you gain more renown for winning that fight um another way to earn renown is to do tournaments now what i would recommend doing is not doing those for the time being because you've started out your gear is not very good i think you own i think you have uh not a lot of stuff you 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 have like the, i still have it i still have the layered leather tunic um, you don't have very good armor. You don't have any 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 decent weapons or anything like that. So the main thing is just just pick and choose your fights. Um, so what you want to be doing is you want to be doing quests, um, preferably from the towns or the vi or the villages. Um, doing the quests for the people. So this this guy here, um, Goldramand, has the brewer. He has a quest for me. Artisans can't sell the products to the in Oxhall. 
So doing that quest gives me reputation with him. And if I want to recruit troops, um, he's not on here, but the other ones are. Um, once you gain reputation with those, you can unlock their better troops. So they're slightly better. Obviously, you don't want to recruit. You want to start off with a nice crossbowman to your pie. Um, saved you a lot of time rather than doing it manually and paying. You know, you can push her up and get a decent a decent person. So doing doing their missions and stuff like that, that is the best way to gain troops and renown. So once you ha you got to the point where you have 20 decent troops, um, you're around renown one or near it, you want to start earning money. You want to start earning money because you can earn you can earn money to buy a workshop. Now a workshop is in the towns. So the workshops, what they do is you pay an upfront cost of oh let's buy this workshop. You want to pay up for cost of fifteen thousand dinars, so it's quite a lot of money. You want to earn, you want to save up for it. It's very much worth your time, and I'll explain in a second. Um, you want to buy a workshop, and you pick a a certain um, trade that you want to do, whether it's being a tanner, or a smithy, a brewer, um, an olive presser, um, any of those things, and you want to. It's like, it's like a business, like a medieval business, and that's basically what you want to do. So once you've uh, bought this, um, a couple things a couple things that, uh, to, to take note of. Um, when you're in a town, uh, it's important that you pick the correct town, um, i.e. One, one, one of the factions that you've chosen. Because let's say, for instance, you decided that you bought a, um, I don't know, you bought a, uh, a workshop in, in this, in this uh, town here. And then you're with this faction, and they've decided that they wage war. Now, if you're a mercenary or a um, vassal, they will embargo your workshops. You don't earn any money off it. Preferably, you want to do it in the towns that you've uh, you've gained reputation with. Um, and also, another thing to note is you need to check who who is actually there in the town. So, for instance, they have an ironmonger, so they have a smithy, they have a brewer. So you don't want these two. You don't want to build a you don't want to build a, a workshop. That is also a brewer because then you're competing you're losing money you want to pick one that isn't isn't along the top basically so once you have that um the reason why it's so good is because when you have troops um so if i pull my units out here so i have 65 here now they cost me 246 a day every day i lose 246 gold and i've got no way of earning that money back i have to constantly fight and gain money which is stressful it's like it's, it's a lot of effort to do that um, and it's a good little, you know, way to cap off your, your wages. Um, it means you're also spending less on, on food as well. So, yeah, a workshop is a really, really good idea, um, especially when you get wiped out and you become a prisoner and you've got no troops left and you're on your own, you've lost loads of money. Um, it stops you, it breaks you out of that vicious cycle where you're buying troops, dying very easily, having no money, can't afford them, um, and it's it's all around a really good thing. It's always money you can fall back on as well, and you're always earning earning that. So once you have the workshop and you've won a few fights, and again you've got your 20 to 30 strong men, uh, this is where I would recommend start doing tournaments to gain a bit more renown. Because basically what you can do is you can go to trade on any any of the tournament areas. You can buy yourself some decent gear, you know, some armor, some some decent head armor. I think I won that from a tournament. Um, and then you can go into the tournament. So they work differently from Warband where they don't give you preset gear. Some of the fights you go in with preset gear, but some of the fights you go in with your own gear. And um, it's quite important that you, you buy yourself some decent stuff so you can actually win those fights. Um, I wouldn't recommend betting. You used to be able to bet in Warband and you could earn 3,000 dinars, which is completely OP um, if you won. But the betting on this is far weaker. You only earn like 1,000. Um, it's not worth your time because you may lose. It's quite hard. The AI is vastly improved since um, since Warband, so you can't just cheese the cheese the tournaments. Um, yeah, so doing some tournaments, they're always good fun, um, especially when you earn the gear. I mean, if it's gear for your build, that's great. If it's not, you can just sell it. It usually goes for upwards of like a thousand, like the piece or like a horse or a sword or something. Okay, so at this point, uh, you've become a mercenary um, from your chosen faction. That's pretty easily done. You just find any any arm, any nobleman, like this guy here, Bel Belgia, Belgia. Um, you talk to him, um, and you become a mercenary. It's, it's right there in text. You just say, I want to become a mercenary. He's cool, you're hired. That's great. We like you because you've been doing quests for us. Um, and what that gives you access to is it gives you ac access to their uh, license to kill, basically, that their resources. So once you become a mercenary, you become aligned with the, the Vlandians, for example, or any of the others. And you can see that we're in, at war with the, Nord the Nords. So... They have caravans going to and from all the other factions, not to us because we're at war, but they have fact they have caravans going to and from all of the other places. All you gotta do is just walk on over to these, 
cut off their routes and you can raid their caravans. And the caravans usually have decent money, decent soldiers. So it's recommended to have about 40 troops. Um, 40 troops that are reasonably trained um, so you can beat their troops. Um, on top of that, you can also comfortably raid villages. Now, ra villages have like 30 or 40 militia in them, depending if they're being raided over and over again, but they usually have 30 to 40 militia in them. So when you raid the village, um, you have to first attack the villagers and then you can start raiding, which in turn gives you resources back. Um, it's morally acceptable because you're at war with them. Um, and that is basically why you become a mercenary. It's not because they pay you 10, 10 dinars for every fight you win. It's, it's more like they're licensed to kill. And it's not just them that you're at war with. Um, they're also at war with the whole faction. So they're not just out to get you personally. They're out to get the whole faction. So you have support and, and um, protection, basically. Once you've got yourself sorted and you've built your renown up and it's now level two, you become a vassal. Now, a vassal is one step up from a mercenary, and the way to become a vassal is you talk to the king. So the king of the Vlandians is Dethert, and um, I don't know about the rest of the kings so far. This is my second or third playthrough. So I talked to Dethert, and he I offered to become a vassal. And what a vassal becomes is you, be, you become essentially like this guy here. You become a nobleman of, of um, Vlandia, for example, and you have an opportunity to weigh in on like their policies. If you go to Kingdom... You can you can talk you can change their policies. You spend influence to do this. Um, you can create your own army and you can siege siege a, a settlement. So you can start doing siege battles, which is really fun. Um, and then maybe uh, the king and the the nobleman will decide that you 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 can be the, the the owner of this this new castle. And owning a castle obviously is more profit, um, and it gives you to that late stage of the game. Now, once you've done that. You, then you continue to win fights. Um, you gain more renown by fighting like enemy enemy noblemen, and you become level three. You're eligible to create your own kingdom. So this is when you strike out on your own. So you talk to Death again, for example, your king, and you say, "I don't want to be a vassal anymore. Bye, see you later." And you say goodbye to him. He hates you, but that's fine. I don't think you. They'll depending on how 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 well you've treated them, they won't uh, wage war on you straight away. And you you can you can start a war on any of the factions and create your own kingdom. And that's opening up to the to the late game of Warband, and that's basically what you'd be doing. So yeah, I I hope this uh this tiny little little path I'd say it's not really much of a guide. It's just more like a path of what you should do. Um, I hope it's helped, and I will be back soon, probably with another Warband video. Peace.